Hello everyone and welcome to the quarter three test review. This test review will be broken into three parts. This is part one. So the first one was to simplify cube roots and square roots. So for this first problem, there are a couple different ways you can attack this problem. Some teachers will teach you to hunt for perfect squares and you would say this is four times uh, 43, which is 2 times the square root of 43. Some teachers will have you do the factor tree, which is 2 and 86 and 2 and 43. 43 is prime, it can't be broken up, so that's 2 times the square root of 43. Do a similar thing over here with the factor tree. And so what we see is a pair of twos and two pair of x's. Sorry, that second circle's a little off. There we go. And we will get 2x squared times the square root of 3x. These problems are very similar. This is 25 and 2 and 5 and 5, x, y, y. So I get a pair of y's and a pair of 5's, so that's 5y times the square root of 2x, because 2 and x didn't find partners. This one's different because it's a cube root. And so for this one, instead of looking for groups of 2, we're looking for groups of 3. So we do the same thing for the factor tree which is 4 and 10 and 2 and 2. But instead of looking for groups of 2, we're now looking for groups of 3. And so we'll get 2x squared y times the cube root of 5y. And the most common mistake students make is they forget to write the index and they say it's the square root of 5y instead of the cube root of 5y. All right, so for number 5, same thing here. It's 3 and 9 and 3 and 3. So it'll be 3y times the cube root of xy squared. And this one is 3. Sorry, I had to pause. Someone was knocking on my door. So this is 8 and 7 and x. 7 x's. Oops, sorry, let me finish out the 8. So that's 4. And 2 and 2 and 2. So you'll get 2x squared times the cube root of 7x. For number 7, circle each expression that is in simplest form. Well, here we can break that down to a 3 and a 5. But we can't break that down anymore, so that's in simplest form. The x can't be paired with anything. 3, 2, x. There's nothing that can be paired, paired there. But here, we see that we have a pair of 3s. We're going to have a couple pairs of x's. We're going to have a couple pairs of y's. And so as a result, this one is not in simplest radical form. All right, so this number 8 looks like it's a radical problem, but it's not. It's just 2 times 7 minus 3 times 5, because the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 25 is 5, and that's 14 minus 15, or negative 1. Right, so this one's a little bit trickier. This is a 4 and a 7 and a 2 and a 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 7 plus 5 times the square root of 7. The only way you can add radicals, if the radicands, the numbers under the radical, are the same. And then we add them, but all we add are the coefficients. The radicand does not change. For number 10, 
we'll get something similar. This will simplify as 6 times the square root of 6 plus 8 times the square root of 6. So that will be 14 times the square root of 6. Here, when you multiply, you just multiply the radicands, and so you'll get the square root of 90. But then we have to reduce that radical. So that'll be 3 times the square root of 10. So that was it for radicals. Now we're moving on to factoring. So here, factoring with A is 1. So what we're looking for are two numbers whose product is 7 and whose sum is 8. And those two numbers are 7 and 1. Same thing here. We're looking for two numbers whose product is 9 but whose sum is negative 10. So those two numbers are negative 9 and negative 1. And we can take that shortcut as long as A is 1. Now, at first glance, it looks like this problem, A is not 1. But what you will notice is that there is a greatest common factor of 2. And now I'm factoring a trinomial where A is 1. And so this will be 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 1. Once again, I'm going very fast with these. If you ever need to, rewind the video. Um, this is 5. Once again, this is another problem that is being described. Mr. Richardson, Mr. Richardson. Sorry for the interruption. Please contact the front office. Ms. Richardson, Ms. Richardson. Please tell the bill to please contact the front office. So this is another problem where we can, it looks like it's got a leading coefficient other than 1, but it in fact does not. All right, so now this problem is a little trickier. This one is I'm going to come back to, and I'm going to do actually number 17 first. So all you want to do is factor the top, and we just factored a problem like this, as x plus 3 times x plus 1 over x plus 1. So then I can cancel the x plus 1s, and I get x plus 3. Now you do number 16 the same way, but first I'm going to rewrite this as 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. So this is what I'm trying to factor on the top. And so I use a method called AC. Some people use Xbox, some people use slide and divide. But what are two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 15 that add up to negative 2? And those two numbers are negative 5 and positive 3. So this will be 3x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 5. And then I factor by grouping. And that'll be x times 3x minus 5 plus 1 times 3x minus 5. And so the top part of this factors as x plus 1 times 3x minus 5. But the whole fraction, as it originally was, was over x plus 1. So the x plus 1's cancel, and your final answer is 3x minus 5. So that's it on factoring. So moving on to rules of exponents. So remember your order of operations. You need to raise this square at first. And when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. But when you multiply numbers with the same base, you add the exponents. Now, the common mistake is that this negative 11 only refers to this base, not to the 125 out front. So that'll be 125 over x to the 11. This one, when you divide exponents that have the same base, you subtract. But then a negative exponent means that you move it to the bottom. Also remember that anything raised to the zero power equals 1, so this is just 1 over 15x to the third power. 
21, find the area and perimeter. So I'll do area first. Area is length times width, so that's x plus 1 times 2x plus 5, which can be written out as 2x squared plus 7x plus 5. And I'll show a few more steps just so you can see where that comes from. So that'll be 2x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 5. And the middle two terms combine to be that. To do perimeter, we just add up all the sides. So that's x plus 1 plus 2x plus 5 plus x plus 1 plus 2x plus 5. Because it's a rectangle, this side is 2x plus 5, and this side is x plus 1. And so we'll get 6x plus 12. For here, simplifying, remember, if it's minus something in parentheses, you have to distribute the negative. So this will be 4x cubed minus x plus 7 minus 2x cubed minus x squared plus x. Because when you distribute the negative, you multiply everything inside the parentheses by negative 1. So then we combine like terms. only like terms are those. Miss Girl, please call 3150. Alright, so next up is 23. So this is just very basic looking at this is an x squared, and then there's two of those, so that's 2x squared. If this is an x, then there's one, two, three, four of those in the singles. And so this one over here would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. All right, moving on to systems of equations. So this one I'm going to solve by elimination. I'm going to subtract the two equations from each other. x minus x is 0. 2y minus 1y is 3y. And 14 minus negative 1 is 15. And I divide both sides by 3, and I get y equals 5. Now that I know what y is, I can solve the other part. So x minus 5 equals 1. So then I just add 5 to both sides, and I get x equals, I'm sorry, this should be negative 1, so this is 4. And so my intersection is 4, 5. Here, for this one, I'm going to use substitution. So this is 2x minus y equals negative 8, which is the second equation. But instead of writing y here, I will write all of this, which is 3 fourths x minus 2. So that'll be 2x minus 3 fourths x plus 2, because I have to distribute the negative, equals negative 8. Now, we're going to, have to do some fraction work here, but 2x, so this is a fourths x minus 3 fourths x plus 2 equals negative 8, which is 5 fourths x plus 2 equals negative 8. And so then I subtract 2 from both sides and I get 5 fourths x equals negative 10. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. I get x equals negative 8. Then to find y, I plug back into my equation. y equals 3 fourths times negative 8 minus 2. 
means that y equals negative 6 minus 2, or y equals negative 8. So my solution set is negative 8. Sorry, my solution is negative 8, negative 8. Peter Griffin is making a rectangular quilt that is 4 feet longer than it is wide. The perimeter of the quilt is to be 30 feet. Which system below correctly represents the problem? So the length, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width is the perimeter. So that's 30. That one's out. So it's then if it's 4 feet longer than it is wide, then L minus, then the length minus the width has to be 4. So the correct answer is B. All right, the rock is making a rectangular blanket that is six feet longer than it is wide. You don't actually have to do this one as a system. Just draw a picture. If this is the width, then the other side is W plus 4. And then you just add up all the sides. W plus W plus 4 plus W plus W plus 4 equals 60, or 4w plus 8 equals 60. Subtract 8 from both sides, 4w equals 52. You divide both sides by 4, and you get w equals 13. So if this is 13, then this is 13 plus 4, which is 17. So the blanket is 13 feet by 17 feet. All right, last two problems, graphing the system of inequalities. So for the first one, the y-intercept the y is at negative 3, but the slope is going to be 1. And because it's y is less than or equal to, this will be a solid line. Um, before I shade, I, from this one I will shade, be shading down. So I'll be shading this region, but I want to shade the intersection. So I'm going to hold off shading until I draw the other line. The other line has a y-intercept of 2 with a slope of 3. So remember, rise over 1, 3 over 1. And this one, though, will be a dotted line. And I'm going to extend these lines here just a little bit. Now I need to shade up from the dotted line, but down from the solid line. So my shaded region is actually going to be this region right here. All right, so number 30, last problem in part one, it is, so we'll graph the first one. So I'll have a y-intercept of negative one-half, negative four, sorry, and a slope of one-half. So rise one, run two. Once again, this will be a, this will be a dotted line. And then the other one, we have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. And then we fix that. Now we're going to shade up from the blue line and down from the red line. So our shaded region is this area right here. And anything, any point in there is part of the solution. All right, so that's part one of the review. If you have any questions, ask your teacher before you start the exam.